Morning, everybody. This is the first of the lecture previews for Blood. I'll try to break this down into three manageable chunks. Again, this will be the first of the lecture portion uh, or lecture previews uh, for a class. Um, whenever I think about Blood, I think about it having three different general functions. Uh, transportation, regulation, and protection. What do I mean by transportation? Um, well, transportation is going to come in the form of gases, so oxygen, carbon dioxide. We're going to take oxygen to the peripheral tissues, and we're going to um, exchange carbon dioxide through the lungs. Nutrients, again, nutrients being in the form of electrolytes and in the form of our trace elements, getting to different um, um, areas of the body needed for cellular metabolism to occur. Hormones, again, this is uh, this makes sense. Gonadotropin releasing hormone going to the anterior pituitary to produce LH and FSH. LH and FSH diffusing through the blood to the testes and ovaries in order to produce estrogen and testosterone. Uh, waste products. This is transporting um, waste to the kidneys in order for filtration to occur. Um, these are just some of the means of transportation that occurs. Regulation. Your body has built in uh, carbonic and hydrase system. Um, we'll discuss that later on in which the blood is going to maintain a normal pH. Your body has a normal pH between 7.35 and 7.45. This is going to be important for the body to function uh, at a normal capacity. Uh, protection, I think about protection, I think about it being in the form of uh, white blood cells, your immune system. So the red marrow is going to be where all um, blood cells are produced. Uh, so um, whether, uh, so we'll discuss this on the next slide. Um, so blood has two main components, blood plasma and formed elements. So I want you to think of blood plasma as being the liquid portion. This is mostly the water portion. And I want you to think about the formed elements being everything else. This is your red blood cell, your white blood cell, and your platelets. So again, this is important to note because um, your blood is consistent of two different things. Your plasma, which makes up about 55%, and the formed elements, which makes up about 45%. You can actually separate these two depending on weight and something called a centrifuge, and we'll see this later on. Now, what's present in the blood plasma? That's important. Uh, proteins, plasma proteins. So within the blood plasma, you're going to have these proteins. Um, the hepatocytes are going to be responsible for synthesizing most of the plasma proteins. And um, whenever you think about hepatocyte, you need to break it down into its root word. Hepato means liver, so liver cell. The liver cells sy synthesize most of the plasma proteins. Now, what are these plasma proteins? Albumin, fibrinogen, and antibodies. So antibodies, again, this is going to be responsible for the immune system. Fibrinogen is going to be responsible for clotting. And albumin is going to be an important protein that is uh, going to be necessary for filtration as well as carrying other substances. This is a picture depicting the two different layers, uh, or two different elements of blood. You've got the red blood cells, which are going to be your formed elements. Within this are going to be, um, uh, within this is going to be your oxygen-rich carrying um, red blood cells. Within this is going to be your plasma, mostly plasma proteins up in here. Uh, this representation here is it's called the Buffy coat. This is just the area composed of white blood cells and platelets. Here's just a picture showing you, um, I want to draw your attention down here, the formed elements again we said representing around 45%. Within this 45% we break it down even further. So if you did a something called a complete blood count, um, a CBC, you would see that you have between 150,000 to 400,000 platelets. This is a normal range. White blood cells, we typically have between 5,000 to 10,000. And red cells, we have between 4.8 to 5.4. Now, these numbers do di differ depending whether you're male or female. Um, neutrophils, um, so white blood cells, we're breaking this down further. This is going to be the main or the majority of your white cells are going to be something called neutrophils. And we'll discuss these in more detail. Each of these white cells are going to be responsible for different functions. For example, your lymphocytes are going to be important for long-term immunity, whether they're B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. This will, uh, for example, if you had an infection as a child, um, and you don't get this infection later on, this will be because of your memory cells, your lymphocytes. 
This is the same way vaccination works, is through stimulation of your lymphocytes. The neutrophils, this is going to be an important response for your innate immune system. This will attack any uh, invading bacteria or um, or uh, if inflammation is present, the neutrophilic count might be elevated. Your monocytes, uh, these will differentiate into lymphocytes depending on which tissue they're in. Eosinophils will be responsible for um, your allergic response as well as uh, any parasites that are involved. So let's say that you're in South America walking barefoot on a beach and you um, uh, notice a uh, later on you wind up having a worm crawl into your foot. This actually can happen. It's an infection called strongyloides. I'm not exactly sure where it's present the most. Uh, I want to say it's actually present in the U.S. in some areas. But your eosinophil count may be elevated. And basophils, again, this is just going to be another uh, response that is present in the allergies. This is a peripheral smear just kind of depicting what we previously described in terms of white cells, red cells, and platelets. The red cells are going to have a bioconcave shaped disc, which I'll show you on our next slide. They're going to be probably one of the second largest. I would argue that the white cells are going to be larger or bigger on the peripheral smear. This is an example of a neutrophil, which has a lobulated appearance or has four different uh, lobules. This is the uh, blood plasma, which is the liquid portion of the blood, contains plasma proteins. Here is an example of the platelet. The platelet is usually smaller than the rest of the elements present. This is a monocyte, which has a typical kidney bean-shaped appearance. This next slide is going to be important. This is um, uh, telling you how um, blood cells are produced. So the red marrow is going to be responsible for the production of all um, red blood cells. That's important to know, the red bone marrow. And it does it in a form called hematopoiesis. So hemato meaning blood, the forming of blood. Each cell begins as something called a pluripotent stem cell. So I want you to think of this being a little kid uh, growing up to decide on what he wants to become. Well, in the case of a cell, uh, a pluripotent stem cell, it depends on something called a transcription factor or a hormone in order to determine uh, whether it forms a red blood cell, a white blood cell, or a platelet. We have a negative feedback system that is built in to make sure that we don't have too many or too little red blood cells and platelets. Again, this would um, be terrible if we had too many red blood cells or sexually conditions where um, you produce too many red blood cells. Or if you produce too little, we need to have a system that says, hey, we need more products. Uh, increase the production of red blood cells. Uh, depending on the abundance of white blood cells, we know this is in response to invading pathogens or invading foreign antigens. This is a picture here just depicting to you the different types of production of cells. Again, your red marrow is going to contain pluripotent stem cells. Again, that word's important, pluripotent stem cells. And depending on which transcription factor is present will depend on whether you produce platelets, white blood cells, or red blood cells. But again, we all know that these are part of the formed elements of the blood. Within the white blood cells, again, we can differentiate this into the myeloid lineage or into the lymphoid lineage. If you're part of the lymphoid lineage, you produce lymphocytes. If you're part of the myeloid lineage, you produce monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, or neutrophils. Here's just a picture. Um, you don't have to memorize this by any means, but I think it's a good representation of what we've previously discussed. This is a pluripotent stem cell. The pluripotent stem cell will then produce one of these transcription factors and determine on what you produce next. So if we produce a lymphoid stem cell, we'll either produce a T lymphocyte, a B lymphocyte, or a natural killer lymphocyte. The precursor stage or the immature stage is something called a lymphoblast. So T lymphoblasts become T lymphocytes. B lymphoblasts develop into mature B lymphocytes. And natural killer lymphoblasts develop into natural killer cells. B lymphocytes can then go on further and produce something called a plasma cell. And then monocytes can go on to produce something called a macrophage. And this just occurs uh, whenever it migrates out of the tissue itself. So we have the lymphoid lineage. We know we can become either a T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, or a natural killer cell. So what else is left? 
If you don't become a lymphoid stem cell, you become a myeloid stem cell. For the myeloid stem cell, you can either become a red blood cell, a platelet, or a white blood cell. So let's discuss the red blood cell. Um, through the production of colony form forming unit erythrocyte, CFUE erythrocyte, we become a proerythroblast. And it's important to note that a proerythroblast is different than a reticulocyte and erythrocyte because a proerythroblast still contains the nucleus. However, a reticulocyte is still an immature form of a red blood cell, but it has it loses its nucleus. And from there it becomes a red blood cell. From, from here we have something called a CFU meg. CFU meg means colony forming unit megakaryocyte. This produces something called a, mega, a megakaryal blast, which produces a megakaryal site, which will then produce a platelet or a thrombocyte. From here, we will discuss the presence of eosinophils, basophils, myeloblasts, monoblasts. So, in the instance of forming colony forming unit, granule site macrophage, CFUGM, we can produce either a myeloblast or a monoblast. Monoblasts go on to form monocytes which monocytes can go on to differentiate to form macrophages. From there, we know that a myeloblast can form a neutrophil. And again, this is going to be the major, uh, it's going to make up roughly 60 to 70% 70, 70 of the white blood cells. Um, the eosinophilic myeloblasts go on to form the eosinophils, and the basophilic myeloblasts go on to form the basophils. We'll end it on this slide right here. So I just want you to know that stem cells are present within the red bone marrow, right? We've said that. Stem cells are present. Pluripotent stem cells are produced in the red bone marrow. They reproduce themselves. They proliferate and differentiate depending on the presence of the transcription factor or the hormone present. What is important to know is that cells, red cells, enter bloodstream through something called sinusoids. So a sinusoid is just a capillary. It's a blood vessel similar to a capillary. And instead of, we know that capillaries have this continuous endothelium. However, these sinusoids have something called a discontinuous endothelium. I'm going to show you a picture of this. You can see here on this picture right here, uh, this is an endothelial cell. And you can see this area of discontinuous endothelium. So this is how the red cells are able to get out. Uh, formed elements, and again, the formed elements, what are they? The red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. So formed elements do not divide once they leave the red marrow. The only exception is lymphocytes, and this is during an immune response. We will pick up um, for the second portion of the lecture preview um, in the next class. Thank you so much.